go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, so um, Chamber said that we have about 30 plus people that are joining us today. Um, so there might be quite a bit of us. So with that said, maybe we just go ahead and get started in introducing ourselves and then um, um, and then that way if other people join, then they can just do so without taking into our time. So um, I think most of you have attended before, but for those that are new, uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves with your name, title, tagline if you have one. So for example, I say, my name is Zoe Jansen. I'm a licensed realtor in the state of Minnesota. I work realty hard. Yes, that's cheesy. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead and unmute yourselves. Um, I'll just um, I'll just go ahead and call your name from the list I have. Um, that might be different than the gallery version that you have, but I'll just go ahead and call your name if that's okay. Um, Julie. Good morning. Hello, I'm Julie Keeney. I work for Winona State University Rochester uh, as a business outreach coordinator, which involves uh, designing customized training for businesses. Perfect. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm Rebecca Sell, and I'm a business advisor with Think Bank and Bank Local, and come meet your money. Nice, uh, Paulette. Hi, I'm Paulette Teigen, and I'm here representing SCORE, which is an organization of business volunteers. And um, what I enjoy so much about it is that I get to help mentor small businesses, either startups um, or people just considering going into business. And I really enjoy it a lot. Nice. Um, I'm sorry, my list just changed. Uh, Amelia? Hi. I'm Amelia. I'm a board certified music therapist with Healing Rhythms, uh, empowering lives through music. Perfect. Brooke, our speaker today. Hi, everyone. Brooke Carlson. I'm a small business owner for a health and human services consulting firm. I lead the Rochester Nonprofit Consortium, and I'm the new um, city council president. So I'll fill you all in in a few minutes. Yay. Um, Casey Larson. Hi, this is my first time. Um, I am therapist, owner of Amazing You Therapy, working with people of all ages, including like birth to five, and helping um, helping you on your inner steps to or your steps to inner peace. Nice, uh, Cindy. Hi, good morning, Cindy Steinhauser. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Rochester. Happy Friday. Um, and I just want to apologize in advance. I have to leave early because I see that a meeting got put on my calendar this morning that conflicts with this, but I'm here as long as I can. So good morning, I'm glad everyone. glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, Crystal? Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Crystal. I um, am not on video because I'm driving right now. But um, I am co-owner with my husband of Trail Creek Coffee Roasters. We are a small batch specialty coffee roaster with a passion for connection, community connection and global impact. Perfect. Thank you. Donna? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot. <laughs> Donna Carlisle. From Indianapolis, Indiana, I am at with VA on the spot. We are virtual assistants helping professionals free up their time so that they can concentrate on living their lives. We take off the shoulders of the office professional, those off, uh, time consuming tasks that are usually not that individual's forte and just take up their precious time, helping them to get back to working on their business and growing it. We are VA on the spot helping you succeed one task at a time. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Molly? Hi, I'm Molly Schmidt, and I am the Marketing and Communications Specialist for Rochester Area Economic Development. Thanks for having me this morning. Oh, thank you. Uh, Sherry Hoffman? Good morning, ladies. Good to be here. 
Sherry Hoffman. I'm branding myself as go-to granny at Zimbrota Ford. I sell cars for a living, but more importantly, I help people every day through one of the toughest purchases that they have to make. Have a great morning. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer? We do. Sorry, everyone. Um, it's difficult having children at home, distance learning, so I apologize. Um, uh, I'm Jennifer Teske, um, Vice President of United Way, uh, and uh, we fight for the health, education, and financial stability of everyone in our community. And I just want to remind everyone that Power of the Purse is still on. It's virtual this year. Um, so I encourage you to sign up and bid high. Um, I'll put the link in the chat here so you can do that this morning. Perfect. Thank you. Jess Peterson. Hey, Jess Peterson, Midwest Bank, Small Business Development Coordinator. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's early. I haven't spoken with anyone yet. <laughs> Um, creative people, creative solutions. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Jill Mickelson. I'm sorry, some of you I'm putting both names um, because I don't know if we have more than one of the same name. That's, that's okay, Zoe. I'm Jill Michelson. I'm principal engineer with Braun Intertech, or a consulting engineering and construction materials testing firm. I like to joke that um, I've used Zoom so much that I've actually broke the camera on my phone. So you're stuck with my static image today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Judy? Good morning, everyone. Judy Bamstead, Premier Bank, and I'm the Human Resources Coordinator. Um, we are helping um, people make their dreams come true. We are looking for a mortgage loan processor. So if you know anyone, send them my way. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Katrina, just in time. <laughs> Can, do you want to- Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> trying to come on. <laughs> I'm running around trying to do a whole bunch of things this morning. <laughs> oh, there's me in my background. I don't even know how I did that. <laughs> Hey <laughs> guys, Katrina with Air Insanity. Uh, just wanted to stop in and say hi. I'm coming in late, so I'm running late around like crazy this morning. <laughs> oh, you're good. Thank you for being here, Kathy. Good morning. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and your <laughs> business title? Um, sure. Good morning. I'm Kathy Rowling, and I'm in Winona. And um, I have a, a consulting business. I help people with their bookkeeping, um, taxes, payroll. Um, just started a new payroll company called Payroll Vault. Um, so I've, I'm pivoting during the uh, pandemic. I found something a little bit different that's not gonna go away uh, or get as affected because everybody kind of needs payroll. So um, that's one of the things that I um, just started or am starting in the last month or so. And um, just wanted to, start reaching out into different areas and find out what's going on in the rest of the state instead of just in one other right now. So that's kind of why I joined this group. So perfect. Thank you. Excited to be here. Uh, March. Good morning. I'm March Kelly. I'm a director of professional staffing at Express. So, uh, I'm a professional recruiter. So I help uh, organizations find great talent. So if there's anything I can do for anyone, please let me know. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, guys. I'm Alicia with Tulip Tree Studios. We offer marketing, advertising, graphic design, website, social media services. And yes, being at home with children, trying to help them with their homework really makes you feel like you should have paid attention in school more. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Michelle Pregan. Good morning, ladies. Um, Michelle Brigham here. I'm the CEO at Cardinal Minnesota. We are a long-term care organization. We provide housing and daily supports for adults with disabilities, uh, primarily in southeastern Minnesota, so Rochester, Winona, Austin area. Perfect. Thank you. Miranda? Hello. Good morning, ladies. Um, I'm Miranda, marketing coordinator at Gift of Life Transfer where we help transplant patients and their caregivers, um, or we provide housing for transplant patients and their caregivers during any point at their transplant journey. So, 
have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, Molly, did you go already? I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then let me just uh, go over my list just to make sure I don't, I'm not missing anybody. Cassie? Good morning, everyone. Cass <laughs> my name is Cassie Ray. I'm a workforce development specialist from RCTC. Uh, I work with local businesses with their training needs. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Did everyone get the chance to introduce themselves? If not, feel free to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> I think we did it. Okay, sounds good. Um, if there's anybody who joins us later, we'll make sure uh, they have the chance as well. Um, okay, so um, for those that are uh, attending for the first time, what we'll do today is um, we'll go ahead and break into a small group. Um, and sooner we get into our small group, better probably so you can have a uh, good enough time to discuss with each other um, and the topic I wanted to talk about is so the next time we meet will be in December and it'll be right before Christmas and not a lot of business days left in 2020 which I think a lot of people are happy about to finish 2020. <laughs> um, so I wanted to say, um, ask you today um, what you plan to do before, um, definitely before the, the year ends, um, but preferably, <coughs> excuse me, preferably before um, we meet next month and I wanted to ask what you, if you can share maybe two action items, like I'll get this thing done in my work or in my life and I'll complete this item. And then one like wishful thinking, like I would like to finish this item. Um, Cause I think it's important to kind of categorize our attainable goal and then our hopeful goal. <laughs> so you, you certainly don't have to share them, um, but in your group, go ahead and discuss about what you're hoping to accomplish in the rest of 2020. Um, and because there are 24 of us, we'll just go ahead and have a group of four. So I think it'll be six groups of four. Um, Sherry, do your magic. <laughs> and if you have any questions, just go ahead and write it on the chat. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> well, I just talked, you guys go. <laughs> You're such a goal-driven individual, and that is my, <laughs> my one area that I just lack. <laughs> you know, I like, would not have thought that. I, I know how you, how you work. I would not have thought that about you. I think, well... Think you're hard on yourself. <laughs> So when I, I did LGR and, you know, you do your strengths finder and your number one is activator. My number one is activator. And, um, you know, uh, Bethany describes that as starting little fires everywhere. So I'm like, I love that. I'm so happy to know this about myself. <laughs> so I'm all over the place doing all the things all the time, but it just, it just goes. Oh you yeah. Know, it just kind of. It just happens. <laughs> yeah, there's like finite amount of you and then infinite projects probably. <laughs> right. And, and my boss is like, okay, so I'm going to need some goals out of you. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah. I think there, I just have a hard time putting pen to paper, you know? Oh, see, that's what I do. Ooh. So my um, number one strength um, thing is um, competition. <laughs> ah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, actually, my fiance and I went to the, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with professional work. Uh, we went to the dentist um, and we switched dentists and we had like our normal um, initial exam. And um, my 
dentist, or actually it's the same person, but we had two different days for appointments. And when I first went there, like, oh, did you ever wear braces? I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, this is so great. And then, <laughs> so I come home, I'm like, I have the perfect teeth. And then um, he gets his appointment done and he comes home. He's like, I have the perfect teeth. And we're just like going up against like, who has the better teeth? <laughs> We're going to need to call the dentist on this to really narrow it down. Yes, who actually I is. We need the results. <laughs> I mean, you're self-employed, so you are you have to be self-driven. Yeah. You could be here as a, you know, as your own employer or you could be here or you could, you know, be at the bottom. Oh, Where yeah. do you, you know, and I think you are shooting for the moon. So, oh, I try. I I just <laughs> fall sometimes but I try definitely but um so okay so I'll just share so that way maybe you guys can bounce up hi Judy by the way feel free to hi. come on in <laughs> to the <laughs> I will Sorry, Judy. I'm, di I'm diving so I'm just um I, I am off mute now but I'm I'm just parking and I'm going to get to my office so I'll just listen for now <laughs> oh sure sounds good yeah go right ahead <clears throat> um so what I was thinking was um so I want to, so, oh, um, uh, what's your, your, your goal to wrap up the year? Is that what, yeah, before right. you goals, yeah. So for me, okay, so I'll, uh, I have my, like, big, like, work ones, obviously, because that's how I operate. Um, pen to paper is how I operate. That's so great. Like, we should partner, because then I bet people. <laughs> I'll just talk and you write. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, uh, want to, um, somehow figure out this, like, client appreciation event that I want to do, but in this world of COVID, I don't want to do an event, so that is my goal, uh, for the year, and at this point, maybe just make it a Christmas type, um, thing and I thought about even like hiring carolers and they go to our client's house and sing songs to them and but it's not very logical because I obviously didn't sell every single house on the block so it doesn't make sense for the carolers to go back on the car or you know have the neighbors be like oh sing to us too and then they're like you're not Zoe's client <laughs> what, if, what if you hired like Rochester Trolley um yes and that's a thought um I have quite a bit of um autoimmune compromised clients so I assume mm. that won't necessarily be safe so I'm trying to think of a thing that goes to them and stays out so I thought carolers were good but the logistics doesn't make sense so that's my goal next year um well I wanted to do it this year in the COVID world but we'll see I have to do quite a bit basically this week to get it all right <laughs> We, um, we decided, I think two years ago that, you know, and you probably get this and as a business, we get this too. Um, you're, you know, you're on somebody's thank you list at Christmas time and you end up with this like just giant table of stuff from people. Yeah. So what better time to recognize and thank your clients around Thanksgiving? So we've been doing a thank you. We just mailed out and we decided we usually, you know, drop into the business. How do you do? Thank you so much. But we just didn't know, like, who is comfortable, who's uncomfortable. I didn't even want to have that question. Like, do you feel comfortable with us coming to your place of business <laughs> or, you know, whatever. Um, so we just shipped everything. Um, and and I'm already getting great feedback. So that's what yeah, we Yeah, because um, this is something that's been on my radar since, like, early fall. I'm, like, I'm going to need to do something, like, September. I'm going to need to do something for my clients that are different this year, that's different this year. So what I did, and it's not really fair for all my non-Rochester clients because I didn't get to go that far because October was kind of a cold month. Um, so what I did was typically I invite my clients for um, like a pumpkin patch cool. and then they get to pick a pumpkin and apples and gourds. Mm -hmm. So obviously that didn't happen because how can you possibly figure it out? And then there's no way to serve food without, and then how to individually package them. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I just mixed it all. So I still went and got the pumpkins anyway, and I delivered them to their door. I didn't even ring their doorbell because 
you know, if you're not expecting somebody, like you're probably not ready to like have a conversation or like be talking to people. So I just left it on their door and then I texted them and then it just basically said you we couldn't invite you to the pumpkin patch so here's a piece of it to you so that was my kind of a client appreciation but not necessarily but then now it's too late for me to be dropping off pumpkins <laughs> <laughs> i just i think little things go a long way you know just little touches or you know even a personalized you know card at this point yeah um, yeah just so. to stay on the radar just yeah. little things. Yes. Too. Yep. So they don't forget about you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And actually, so I'll use this for my own therapy session. Um. <laughs> please. Yes, please. <laughs> Let me lay down for a sec. So, <laughs> um, what are you guys doing for client appreciation? What are your businesses doing for that? Maybe that's something I can um, kind of use the similar approach to. Um, well, at Premier Bank, we are um, utilizing our bank customers. So we're making, we're assembling gift baskets with various um, products from our customers in the gift basket. And then we're, we're, we're doing that. So there could be things from an apple orchard or breads from um, a bakery and um, jams and spreads and um, things like, you know, different things like that. And then they do have the option of wine. So we're contacting them saying, which, which one do you like? Um, so then they get to kind of have a choice. And, That's so and nice. then we're delivering. So yeah, so we did, um, we did a, an apple um, kind of a, something in, I think it was September or October and brought around along um, like an apple cutter with apples to uh oh Judy are you still there okay well, I'll give her a minute but that's so nice um that's such a great idea hi Donna thank you for joining us I'm so sorry I'm late oh that's okay <laughs> We didn't even, we, you didn't even rustle into the room or anything. You just <laughs> <laughs> magically appeared. Yeah. Uh, we're just talking about what we're planning to do before the end of the year. Um, just sharing about that. Here I am. <laughs> okay. We're talking about what we're going to do at the end of the year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to know what I'm going to do? Now yeah. that I'm in late, I may as well just take center stage. Yeah. But I'm, yes. I'm really excited about what I'm doing. And if you guys want me to invite you, send me your email. I'll send you a Zoom. So it's going to be a Zoom meeting. And oh, I hate the way I look on here. But, uh, <laughs> oh, it's That's why I always mute my picture. And I can't figure out how to get my still up there this morning. So oh, yeah, well, no, I don't look at myself. Yeah. When I get sick of this, I'm going to, do, yeah, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to my still. But anyway, I'm having a Christmas virtual open house. So my daughter is a performer in Denver. She graduated from Viterbo with a degree in um, opera. She sings in a band that plays 40s, 40s music. So um, I got her <clears throat> to agree to do just her, you know, just her and her boyfriend's going to accompany her on guitar a bit. So she's going to sing about four songs, you know, interspersed throughout the hour. And then we're going to have contests like who has the best um, virtual background, Christmas virtual background. And then we've got these um, games that we're going to play where people hold up their hands and then if they are like yes or no, you know, whoever has the most fingers left at the end of the questions wins the prize. Um, I haven't finished, um, I shouldn't even say this because I haven't talked to her yet, but I know she'll agree. But one of my, I know, <laughs> one of my friends will do a cooking demonstration for a little bit of it. Um, I can't think of what else we got going on, but I am so excited because to showcase my daughter's talent, like 
Yes. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. So anyway, I suppose all you guys were talking about something way better than that, and I just came and forced myself. Oh, this is great. And actually, that's a thought I entertained, and that's my um, uh, virtual party is what I thought. And actually, I wanted to kind of go the similar way as well, where like whoever has like decorative background or like that kind of stuff is uh, like wins something. So yeah, that's absolutely great. Um, Judy, you were saying something and then you got cut off. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, <laughs> I'm in the basement at the bank, so maybe there was some, yeah, something crazy. Yeah, so I was just saying we just use, um, well, I think you've probably heard what we're doing for um, Christmas, the wine or the, the basket option. And then um, in the fall, we delivered apples with um, apple cutters and caramel and, um, and took those to different customers that we around town and, and just kind of left them there. Um, um, we kind of took a, a call first. Do they want to see us? Do they want us to drop it at the door type thing? So, you know, I think just something so... I don't know, we try to do something every month just to stay on the radar with our customers and whether it's bringing pens, um, if they're, you know, a restaurant or something, um, they're always looking for pens or our churches, you know, we, we give them Premier Bank napkins so then they can, you know, have those for cookies and coffee and just, you know, trying to just um, remind them, hey, we're here, <laughs> we're thinking of you, thank you for your business, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I'll be right back. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's such a great idea. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to have to like steal some of these ideas and see if I can find a mesh of them all that works for me. <laughs> yeah. But um, what is one thing you wish to complete this year, but maybe not? <laughs> I'm not telling. Huh? <laughs> But I'm not telling. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, uh, have, I, so I have like, so I think you guys know, so I buy and sell houses for people. Um, and I wanted to have like, you know, five more listings, but it's going to be two more. And I think I'm going to, not have hit that five because uh, you know it takes time to list them and you can't just list the house next week so i need to know and i know i have two or maybe three more coming up but i don't think i'll hit that five number it is what it is <laughs> year's not over they might all of a sudden just rain down on you maybe. yeah so my january is looking stacked up but uh December is it. <laughs> this recent like shutdown of the restaurants and bars and I don't I'm a going out person. I don't cook. We go out to eat almost every day, right? So as I'm eating it, at these restaurants and whatever, you know, I'm seeing there's nobody in there. So shutting them down is is almost asinine, you know, just because they're grappling for the little bit of business they have now. Um, you know, one of my favorite places, Forager, awesome space, um, great people. You talk to them and you're like, okay, so you're, you can have 50% capacity. What would you say you're doing? And, I'll, you know, they're like probably 10%. So comparatively to last year, which is a huge downturn number. So the margins are so narrow to start out with. Right. And like said, you can just tell that um, people don't want to be out. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they are staying at home. So whether they're open or not open, I don't, you know, their bars aren't well attended, you know, but I don't know. So, Rudy and Jess, like, you guys are going to be busy next year with a lot of business programs, probably. Yeah. I agree. I think December is going to be, in traditionally, Judy, if you can probably speak to, to that as well, December is traditionally a sleepy month for bankers, wouldn't you say? And then January is like, yeah. go. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Really, even last year, I'm like, God, I could have taken the whole month off. <laughs> just nothing going on, you know, just nothing going on, nothing new. It's it's too close to, you know, tax season to be moving stuff around and just messing with it. So I think next year is going to be intense. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're busy with a lot of PPP loans. And, oh, Lord, I know. <laughs> you know, just dealing, you know, <laughs> so it's, 
our lenders are very busy, um, mm -hmm. but, and there's a lot of no, support. not my area, thank God. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've, we've called other people from other departments to help support. Wow. Yep. That. There's yep. a lot of, there's a lot mm -hmm. to do with it. So they're, yeah, it's, it's going to be busy this year, but um, yeah, that January too, it's, um, it's, it's the start and, you know, uh, January and February, transaction wise, you know, we used to have a lot of snowbirds, you know, leaving. I don't think anybody's going to be no. traveling that much. I, that's my prediction. So it'll probably still keep being as busy as, as it is. So there's still, I mean, there's a looming relief package for both business and individuals through the government. And we don't know what that looks like. I haven't even heard a whisper really. It did, it had been a couple blurbs and then the whole election and all that. So that might bring something interesting too, um, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Is PPP loan still being requested? And like, cause I thought that you can't apply to, right now. Yeah. Yeah. The forgiveness part. So yeah. people are, you know, there's, you know, now that they have the money, then they have to provide records and we have to make sure that they're, um, yeah. you know, they, we have to review all that and, and then help them get the, the forgiveness. So yeah, it's, it's a, big animal that's for sure mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like intimidated just here like that's a lot of work <laughs> it, it is a lot of work but you know I I don't know where where would we be what would we have been doing twiddling our thumbs I think it was great that they put it on the banks so that we could be involved mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. SBA couldn't have handled that by themselves so yeah yep. good we work together mm -hmm. I'm sorry to cut in real quick sorry nope. Sherry, I did not look at the time um, you can put the one minute um, warning now. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Well, I want to say I'm. I plan to um, get out my um, or get everything tackled on my to-do list, my my personal to-do list, because all I've been doing is working <laughs> through yep. all of COVID. I'm on vacation, and, staycation yeah. next week. Yep. <laughs> yep, and take some time for myself. That's what I'm doing. Good <laughs> for you, Judy. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I, I think um, December, unless like you're, you know, retail, I think December is kind of a yep. slow month for most businesses anyway, like it is for mine. But no, this December, like I'm busy. I'm Good. running around, Good. which is why I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, but I think this year just kind of made it just abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, taking time and doing personal to-do to list sounds really good, actually. Yeah. Thanks. Good family. Good, good support. So. How's the Due North coffee going? I need to come get a cup. Well, we're not open yet. Um, not yet. We, okay. yep, we have the trailer and it's here. And so we're just getting everything set up right now. So it looks gorgeous. I can't oh, exciting. I think that's definitely my favorite thing in life right now I've learned is to design something and create things oh. and see it come to life. <laughs> it's you truly have a gift for it. Fun. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's the name of the business you're talking about? Uh, Do North Coffee. It's a ice house coffee conversion trailer. So we hopefully will have multiple trailers, but right now it's just one. <laughs> oh. okay. Well, welcome back, everybody. Does anybody want to share anything from their group um, group discussion? We talked about um, uh, holiday, Christmas, client appreciation events um, to do before the end of the year. Ours became like a very cheery conversation. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm doing too, Zoe. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> singing with Santa or I might actually be a snowman so you've got if you are interested in Christmas carols or you've got little kids who are check out our Facebook page or sign up for our newsletter where we will be posting about that I will message you immediately after this morning <laughs> well I hope you guys are able to uh, uh, just get in touch with each other and then hopefully my um, hope for the breakout session is when you say like, oh, this is what I want to get done. And somebody else is like, oh, I know how to get that done or a connection or something. So that's what I was hoping. And uh, little do you know, Amelia, I was saying um, 
I need to figure out some kind of a caroling thing to go to my client's house, I will message you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so I hope uh, you were able to find some kind of a solution or some kind of a support from your group. Um, okay, so uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get to the um, the presentation part of our uh, meeting. But uh, before we do, I just wanted to say, um, I, I see you guys doing that. Feel free to put your contact info in the chat um, so that way others have your uh, information and they can get a hold of you there. Um, and feel free to message each other uh, so that way you have that connection um, that you can talk to each other after the round table is done. So um, today's speaker is Brooke and um, uh, Brooke, actually, I should have told you, I'm not introducing the speakers in the Zoom meeting. Um, you can, uh, they've been doing that themselves. Um, but congratulations, our new city council president. So um, she'll be talking to us today. Um, Brooke, uh, will you please tell um, the roundtable how you want to get um, questions and such, if you want to just get them in the chat and such, um, or if, if you want them to unmute and ask questions, if you can address that in the beginning of your talk so we know how to interact. All right, let's welcome Brooke, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Zoe, for inviting me and having me. Um, I would prefer that we have a, a verbal conversation, and certainly if, if you're not able to speak up um, put something in the chat. Maybe Zoe can help monitor that as we go. But I really, I really would like this to be a discussion because we're, as Katrina and I were just talking about, we're really all in this together. And you know, this has been an incredible time of change and uncertainty. And I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that this has been an especially stressful week with the switch to full-time distance learning for my five and eight-year-old and many of you with littles um, and the alarming COVID increases, the governor's new executive orders, which are trying to turn the curve, but of course have very significant implications in our business community and the livelihoods of our families, friends, and neighbors. So given that this is uh, a tough time and so many of us are stressed out, although it is good to hear that, that many of you are thinking positive, happy events coming up, um, you know, it just is a, a tough time and our time is precious. I was trying to find a topic for discussion today that would be most valuable and feel like uh, we had the space together to share productively. So of course, I'm happy to give a little background on myself and my story and answer questions that you might have for me um, as a small business owner, as a mom, um, as I step into this new role of city council president, but I'd really like to talk about um, and have a chance to share some stories, experiences, ideas about the concept of adaptability and how we're seeking acceptance or even opportunity in the discomfort of the ambiguity and the change and uncertainty we're facing. So that's what I sort of put focused on and as I put together my thoughts um, to present to all of you today. And I'm hoping that we can have a time of sharing. Um, so it's not just me talking at you. So some of you may have heard um, that I lost my father two days before the election. So it's really been a whirlwind of big emotions and trying to reconcile a life not unfolding, of course, how I thought it would. Um, I grew up in Rochester. Both of my parents had their entire careers at Mayo. My father uh, was a, um, a gastroenterologist. He touched many lives and made significant contributions to medicine, especially in the area of early detection for cancer. So both of my parents inspired and really expected that my brothers and I would commit our lives to serving our, and improving our communities. This concept of public service was instilled at a very early age in my family. Um, but so was the idea that we needed a clear, executable plan to do whatever it was we're trying to accomplish. When we were growing up, we were regularly faced with my dad's three questions. In fact, they were on the side of our refrigerator in case we ever needed to reference them if we happened to forget them. But they were, what do you want to do? What do you need to do to get there? And are you willing to do it? So with that messaging, in my head, it's no surprise that I became a planner. 
my undergrad degree was in urban planning. My master's degrees are in ge geography and public health, but really about understanding our communities and how they influence our health and then planning policy and system changes to improve them. The central work of my business um, as the owner of North Sky Health Consulting in, and including my role with a nonprofit consortium is planning. That is what I do. So as we all know, life of course, does not work as one beautiful, clear plan just because we've set our minds to something. And I wanna be sure as, as we're talking that I'm acknowledging and being self-reflective that I'm speaking from a place of having resources and the support network that so many in our community do not have. Um, but how do we handle all this adversity and unexpected change that so many of us are facing right now, especially when our coping mechanisms are totally maxed out? I'm sure many of you, like myself, have, have had mornings recently where you're like, how do I actually do this? I do not know how I will get through this day. Um, so I've had a really excellent career, beginning to my career. I had the privilege of working at the Minnesota Department of Health on state health reform legislation, which really built my network and launched my career. And that experience created the opportunity for me to be part of a team that was tasked with starting an affiliate company of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. And that affiliate company was going to consult nationwide projects across the country on health and human services and community improvement projects. So we hired about 30 people um, and for two years, we really hit the ground running. However, I, I acknowledge and should have seen this coming, but the concept did not go exactly as planned. So the week after I returned from maternity leave, having my first son, uh, the whole company was eliminated and with it my position. So I was absolutely devastated, embarrassed, angry, um, all of the big emotions that many of us are going through right now as our, our, we're losing control over what's expected of our business and how we're able to run it. Um, but I'm an activator, so three hours after I got the news, I started, I started to see some of the opportunity in, in the challenge that I was facing. Um, and I, I was in a business development role there, so I knew that the market couldn't support a company of 30 people, but it sure could support a company of one. I tapped into my network shored up the support from my family and dove into a totally different life plan than I ever expected being a business owner. I quickly found that my niche was in helping government, community-based organizations, and healthcare come together and collaboratively improve our communities and improve our community health, and that there was really quite a bit of opportunity in this space. And that was eight years ago this month. And based in St. Paul, I was able to work on projects across the country with every level of government, and large corporations and national associations. But five years ago, I really realized that I was passionate about doing work in the community that I lived in and at the local level that, and in a community that I really cared about and felt connected to. So with the draw of my parents and this wonderful community that I grew up in um, and wanted to raise my kids in, my husband and I moved back to Rochester about five years ago. So since then, I've been honored to work on meaningful collaborative projects across our community, uh, including the Regional Mental Health Crisis Center, um, work with our immigrant refugee families on addressing barriers to uh, education, such as access to technology, especially right now, and the nonprofit consortium, which brings together and builds strategic partnerships across the nonprofit community to improve their ability to meet their missions and uh, with increased operational efficiency. But the consortium has been at the heart of meeting our community's urgent needs during COVID. So it turns out that the three questions have taken on a whole new meaning in my life. Instead, instead of thinking of what do I want to do as some specific job or credential that I'm striving for, what I've always really wanted to do is improve our community and find opportunity within challenges. I hold true to that state, the statement, with breakdown comes breakthrough, and we have a chance to do some of our best innovative work in the face of this crisis. 
I don't always know what I need to do to do that, but that's okay because I know that it's not up to me to figure it out by myself. It's up to all of us in our community to work collaboratively to help each other and help navigate our path forward. So my skills in listening and authentically connecting with a broad range of voices to find those shared values and, and move our work forward together is really what's been most important. I didn't know that I would be thrown into the position of um, helping lead the community response to COVID because of my role with a nonprofit consortium and having those incredibly difficult conversations across our community partners, some of which are here today, of course, and, and, and know what I'm referencing in order to make sure people are fed and supported right now. But it was in this crisis that I found my opportunity to step in, step up, and use what I'd learned to, um, and the meaningful relationships I'd built to, to make the run for office. And am I willing to do it? Well, this month has really tested me and I did not anticipate not having my dad as my cheerleader, at least for this part. But yes, I am indeed willing to do what it takes to graciously and humbly lead our community through this crisis and beyond. And I'm so honored to have been given the chance to do so. <clears throat> so with that short overview of what I'm thinking about today, I'd be happy to answer questions, but really I would love to hear from all of you. And, and Katrina, I might put you on the spot if you're still on, um, because I know we were just talking about this, but how you're experiencing adversity, how you're finding the courage and strength in, to stay true to your values, and what supports have helped you with the, to find that opportunity when things are especially hard. Thank you for your time today. <laughs> well, the true answer is hot tub and trulies. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> what keeps me sane some nights? <laughs> but but no, um, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I, I feel like you know, sometimes women were stronger than we realize. It's a lot like, you know, the first two weeks after you have a child, you just kind of go into zombie mode and you do things that you didn't even know you were humanly possible of doing and you, you don't sleep and you just keep moving forward and somehow you function and you come out on the other end. And that's kind of what I feel like this has been like to me in a sense. Like, I don't even know how I'm functioning. Some days I yell and I feel like I'm an angry person and then I'm like oh this just isn't me what is wrong with me <laughs> I'm gonna just you know sit and watch Caribbean life <laughs> on TV <laughs> somewhere you know <laughs> on a beach somewhere um last week I actually did take off my husband I convinced him finally I was like I just need I don't know what I need I just need something to just clear my mind I don't know what and so he bought us tickets and we you know went down to Florida for three days and I thought that was wonderful I felt great I was like oh my feet are in the sand it's peaceful it's quiet I just loved it and then we came back to this so I am right back to where I was before I left and and calmed myself so I really <laughs> I know I don't think I I definitely don't have the answers I'm just kind of a, a zombie walking right now <laughs> I feel like some days I'm just moving. <laughs> well, from the outside looking in, it looks like you're continuing to inspire and innovate and come up with really amazing ways to carry your business and new businesses forward in the community right now. It's really remarkable. Right. So you have a whole community around you supporting you and one another through this. I think sometimes just keeping your brain busy, whatever it might be. Um, I paint. Sometimes I, I go downstairs and I just paint in a quiet space or um, my husband and I are big fishermen. So we go fish we, when we're really stressed. We yeah. just head to the Mississippi and find a shore and just sit down and fish. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that helps us just woosah a little bit. Um, Finding the respite for sure. Yeah. Or we go down to Preston and go walk a trout stream and mm -hmm. that's super calming to us. And Yeah. And, Having a network to call upon, a network of people is very important as well. Mm -hmm. When in September, I was ready to give up. I really was. And because I just started my business in January. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's been a rough go this year. Yeah. Um, 
And then I spoke with a gal who in the middle of it in April, the company she was working, who she was a VP for was bought out and the new administration was toxic and she quit in April and started her own business and was, I don't have a first client yet, but I'm going to. And I'm like, wow. Oh my gosh, if she can do this, I can do this because I have a little bit, a couple of months ahead of her. So I, uh, I started talking with different people and, and um, getting their support and their encouragement. And that got me through to where I was like, okay, I can do this. I, I just got to keep trying. I just got to keep moving ahead one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, I think, I think the network of, of women and other business owners and just, I mean, every, before this all happened, this is back in March, not this time around, but I didn't really know a lot of the other entertainment. I knew of a lot of the other entertainment um, owners and business owners, you know, like Velocity and um, the escape rooms and things like that. Um, but when this all happened, yeah, all of us reached out and became kind of a team together and really started trying to work through everything together. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? And we all kind of became one and, um, and really started working and figuring out how we were going to function. And, and I think that in itself has been amazing because still today, you know, when this shutdown happened, we're all messaging each other, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> how are we going to get through this? And I think, yeah, just knowing that we're, we're not alone is huge. Yeah, that support network is so important. How about others? How are others facing adversity and, and adapting unexpectedly? Okay, I didn't want to go because I just spoke, but nobody <laughs> said anything. <laughs> um, so I think we, we all are just pivoting and adapting the best we can. Um, in my case, I uh, um, have few clients that are very, um, very sick. They're uh, autoimmune compromised and they have, they have to see me. So um, they were really worried. They're, they're still very much so in lockdown. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, do anything out and about. Um, so with that said, because they had to see me, I told them, I was like, I'll pledge. I won't hang out with my friends. I won't do any, I'll be your part of your lockdown um, crew. And I definitely quarantined harder than most people I know. Um, <laughs> and uh, like didn't get food like as takeout, because I'm like, in case like they sneeze on my food, I don't know. Now I'm thinking like all sorts of things, because I'm like, I don't want my client to get sick from me, because with their health, they wouldn't survive this hit. So mm -hmm. I, I had to do that. So now I have not seen my friends for, I don't know how many months, and I think that's normal for us. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of people. Um, but I probably would have been okay with like, a, you know, outdoor hike with my dog or go to whitewater and go hiking together or something. But I was like, nope, like we can be like whatever many miles apart and I can like text you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so yeah, I've, um, uh, the obviously it's kind of uh, sad and sacrifice, but uh, that really brought me closer to my clients. I feel like they're part of my extended family now. Um, and I feel like I'm in their tribe now. And uh, um, they've already bought their house and they're done now, but um, somebody that was in their ward in, in their chemo group um, was like, oh yeah, I need, to, I need to move as well. So then I had to quarantine yet again. <laughs> so I'm not out of it. <laughs> So those personal behavior changes, sacrifices, those are very real right now to support your clients. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually kind of feel guilty sometimes because I know local businesses need my help, but then like I'm, I'm the person who's at home not going out and supporting them. So I 
I definitely have that guilt of, because I'm definitely a community member first, but yeah. I had to put their lives ahead. So now that makes me feel definitely guilty. Oh, no. But others, I hear people talking about different ways of doing events, of course, and I know it's not just us dealing with this. What other creativity is happening? Rebecca, go ahead. And yeah, I know you I just lost your father too. So yeah, crappy club to be in together. All right. Um, so as a business advisor, just helping clients kind of pivot and brainstorm. A lot of times just being that sounding board um, and getting together a lot of Zoom meetings where we just bounce ideas off of. And it might be um, kind of like what Katrina was saying, an idea that somebody else had. And it's like, okay, let's change it a little bit to how it um, could support their particular industry. And then just literally, if that's just messaging all my friends, like, hey, this business is now doing this service and, um, and bringing those products and gifts, um, my entire like all, you know, sending out all the Thanksgiving gifts that we would have done if we got together as a family has all been local products. Um, our Think Bank, our year end um, employee appreciation basket this year is made up of all of our client gifts and products and gift cards. Um, so that's been fun. So just trying to spread that to the whole family um, too. And, you know, even if it's just one by one, in my own family and friend group, helping support local and then um, kind of connecting the different business owners too, to be like, you know what, I think this person would have a lot of good things to say and help you with. So that's been really fun um, to do. And, and then I said, one of my year end goals was trying to get all 140 of my PPP clients through the forgiveness phase um, as well. So a lot of a lot of things on our to-do list, but everybody comes together through adversity. So I can relate to what Zoe said. You just, they were my tribe before and you're just that much deeper and I'm meeting new connections and new, new people that help. And it's just, it's very re rewarding and healing too. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I can share too. Um, we, um, so my husband and I own a coffee roasting business and honestly, we're, we're really uh, grateful to be in the place that we're in because right now we do a lot of roasting, but we do bring people in on Saturdays and Sundays um, where we have our mobile coffee cart that we had set up at the farmer's market in Rochester over the summer. But with them moving indoors this winter, and just with all of the um, different restrictions, we decided that we wouldn't, they didn't tell us that we couldn't come in the winter, but um, we would tend to have a really long line and a lot of gathering of people um, in the same area. And we didn't want people to be drinking the coffee on site. They want, you know, cause they want to keep consumption off site. So anyway, um, we were, starting to gear towards having people more so come in and we were um, having different bakers come in on Saturdays and Sundays to sell their baked goods. And um, so we were going to have people come in and sit down and hang out and stay. But um, now um, we're just going to pivot again to grabbing um, coffee to go and also looking at setting up a mobile order and pay option. We don't have a drive-through type of setup in our current location in Casson, but um, if, if we can figure out how to have people mobile order and then we can run it out to them, or we've even talked about like this weekend on Saturday, we have Rise Above Bakery that's gonna have cinnamon rolls and she gets a lot of pre-orders. And so um, we thought we would have people pre-order and then set it out on a table with like their name so that they can come in and grab it. So we don't have any like overcrowding at any point in time. Um, yeah, and just really pushing like local, we do free local delivery, um, online ordering, shipping, and, you know, all of that. But it um, made us feel grateful that we don't currently have a sit down shop 
um, it just makes our business more versatile. Thanks, Crystal. So I've heard the themes of self-care, leaning on your network for support um, personally and professionally, uh, making personal, different personal choices and sacrifices, um, switching to local, supporting our local colleagues, coming up with creative and innovative ideas to adapt our business plan, things like changing to to-go and using online ordering and, and switching to delivery models, and then also um, connecting with other business owners who are going through it. And I know we talked at a previous session about um, more formal supports, but of course, because I have you here and have a few more minutes, I now step into this role with the city and I'm wondering for all of you business owners, if there are ideas or things that have come up that have felt like barriers because of city policy or practice or where there might be space for me as a fellow small business owner to support you guys. Go for it, Katrina. I know I you have ideas. <laughs> oh, I got lots. <laughs> um, I think one of the biggest thing, the biggest hurdles with starting a new business in Rochester for anyone is is resources and knowing where to go um, when I first came and wanted to start air insanity and was trying to figure out well how do I get through planning and zoning how do we get around these hurdles even with the coffee trailer right now um, I will be the only operating 365 day a year trailer and nobody in the city knows wow. like me oh because it doesn't exist <laughs> so it's it's just um finding those resources. And then also like no one knew do I, in my department of egg in my department of health, because I'm just coffee. I'm not food, but I, I am going to do any donuts. So it's just juggling through like, okay, well, where am I supposed to go? I'd call department of health and they'd say, no, um, well, you don't exactly fit our criteria. You need to be of egg. And then I'd call them and they would say, no, you don't quite fit our criteria. You need to call department of health. Mm -hmm. so just that toss around. I feel it with both businesses, I felt it so much in the beginning phases to where um, even the planning and zoning, it was like, we're going to have a meeting on Monday and, you know, then maybe we'll, you'll get an answer and then maybe you'll get another answer. Yeah. And yeah. we might need to do this traffic evaluation. Oh, no, we don't need to do the traffic evaluation. You, you can be exempt. And it, it's just that, that constant toss around with no like clear path that I think is the most stressful, frustrating thing to start a new business in town. Uh, we have people like Julie Yakini from um, Winona State and, and SCORE represented on the call. I'm wondering if they're just initial feedback of how those resources currently exist um, and how the city fits into that equation because it's the city's like, obviously the city's involved in some of the licensing, so. Sure. Um, as a SCORE rep, um, we spend a lot of time, you know, listening to what kind of hurdles you have. And between all of our 26 volunteers, everybody's got so much experience that they can, you know, we, we take it back to the group and usually somebody will say, okay, you know, follow these steps here um, or this government group could help you. Um, you know, we're all so interconnected, you know, with SBDC and Smith and um, SCORE, you know, we, we've got just a ton of resources. So sometimes if you really don't know, it would, and you're an established business like yourself, you know, you're, you're not looking for maybe a mentor, you just want um, kind of a down and dirty answer, you know, just give SCORE a call because there's so many resources that we know of that um, might just take some hours off of your search or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, the other confusing um, part to me is like CETA. CETA, um, I know Crystal had mentioned um, going through CETA and some things. They're amazing. The work that they do, they have all the resources, grants. They work so well with the small communities. But in Rochester, we don't have anything like that. Nothing that even compares. And we're twice the size and should have twice the resources. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? Ready has typically focused on larger. Do we have Ready on the call still? I would love to see Ready focus on small businesses because they, I literally, I actually called them when I started Air and Sandy trying to get help from them um, and just direction. And they were probably, I mean, they literally just passed me off to another person and 
pass me off to another person. Like nobody even had one single path or answer. Well, I will now be on the board of ready. So that's Yay. good <laughs> feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really don't know what they do for this town. I haven't. I mean, now in COVID, some of our grants have gone through them and have been administered by them. But before mm -hmm. that, um, okay. Yeah, Katrina, I just joined the CETA board because I've partnered oh, with good. financing on startups. Um, and you're right, they do an amazing job mm -hmm. in our communities. And yeah. that it'd be great if there was a branch even of Ready that just focused on like say this dollar amount and less. Um, and kind of offered those same services. Because um, I get it, they, they do a lot of tech, a lot of large products, especially with Mayo Clinic and um, innovations um, through them. But yeah, it'd be great if Ready had even like a, a division that just kind of offered that same mm -hmm. the CETA support. Yeah. Even the DMC Hi. board. Oh, go ahead. Oh, this is Julie Keeney, went on a state. And I wanted to just add, I think it relates here with um, entrepreneur resources and support. Um, I'm connected through some of partnership programs with the Collider mm -hmm. and the co-working space. And, you know, I, I'm familiar and I know they're really making um, continued efforts to bring more comprehensive resources and a means of sharing those with entrepreneurs and startups. Mm -hmm. um, so between the Collider and then St. Mary's University, I represent one on the state university um, and Minnesota State, two-year, four-year, um, what we offer, as well as Small Business Development Center score. I mean, there are just, there is a wealth of, of resources, but I think you've really hit on the point that just being aware of when to go where and who to go mm -hmm. and who to reach exactly. out to can be hard to navigate. And so, how, do, how do we do that? What is what does affect your decision of which of those entities you go to for support? Right, because absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So um, Jamie Sunsbach and Amanda Leitner through yeah. the Collider uh, co-working, they are working, they've done uh, partnership and grants to survey entrepreneurs. They're gathering more and more information all the time. And I think that will be a really great connection uh, between city, between Ready, between the Chamber, Collider, mm -hmm. and then these other support services, SBDC score and others that yeah. um, can have the full menu of offerings. But you're right, there needs to be really a better um, means of sharing out the navigation of where to go. Well, and from, a, again, my policy and systems thinking lens, like, how does the city make these processes more efficient and smooth yeah. for all of you as instead of just trying to create things to navigate around the difficulty? Where's yeah. their opportunity for efficiency? Yeah. So both and need to happen. Yes, yes. And in a, in a today COVID shutdown scenario, um, RPU would be a huge, um, finding a way for RPU to work with the business owners, um, the city and, you know, even in some sort of relief, I think the, the CARES Act grant that went to RPU, it was only, it was pretty limited on what went there, but it was the one thing that actually directly helped small business owners. And it helped over 300, I believe, small business mm -hmm. owners. It's the only thing that came from the city that actually worked. And they ran out of funds and weren't even able to do the full 5,000 because it worked so well. <laughs> um, and I think finding ways to to now that we know that that actually helps so many people and was such a direct impact to help yeah. the small business owners to find a new way to continue that relationship. And um, right now, especially with the restaurants and everybody being shut down to find a way to work with, get RPU to work with the city. So Great. I've actually emailed all the all of them. So rent relief and utilities are the two yeah. top priorities right now. Yeah, we had a presentation at the nonprofit consortium cross-sector meeting this week on um, rent relief funds and how they've been really quite effective at meeting need and now they're just tumbling as the CARES Act wraps up with no idea of what's in sight other than some locally sourced dollars. So ah, it's just going to get worse. And how, so how do we do this together? Well, I've talked for a long time and I just appreciate the time and space. And, and if any of you do have questions about um, 
me and what I'm representing on council, I'm happy to answer, or you can always reach out to me. Um, my email right now I'll put in the chat, but I'll have a city email pretty soon as well. Are there other questions or final thoughts in our discussion on this uh, topic of adaptability and dealing with adversity? All right, well, Zoe, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, thank you so much for speaking um, today. I think it was very um, needed for our group because <laughs> uh, uh, we've been talking about basically, it, we try not to, but basically all of the virtual women's roundtable has been at in one way, direct or indirect, about COVID affecting our businesses. So it's yeah. kind of just nice to have that, to be able to just talk to each other about it. Because I've been trying not to have COVID discussions, but at the same oh. time, that's what we have. Yeah. <laughs> and it is very real. And I'm sorry if any of what I said was redundant, but I just wanted to be sure you all knew that I'm walking this path with you and here as a resource and a connection with the city. And I, I understand it as a small business owner, what, what many of you are going through. So please lean on me and reach out anytime. Yeah, definitely. All right. So um, that is our round table today. Okay. So a couple, um, uh, a couple announcements. So um, our next meeting, and I'm sorry, I forget it's the third Friday of December to right before Christmas. Uh, we'll, our speaker will be Sylvia. Um, she's the um, owner and president of 125 Live. Um, and then uh, we have January speaker is gonna be um, Emily. Um, she is the owner of Rochester Women's Magazine. So I think we have some good, exciting talks coming up. Um, oh, and can't forget our uh, February is Alicia still here? February is uh, Tulip Tree Studios. Um, they'll be talking about um, marketing and branding. So I think that'll be a, if you like follow the month to month discussion, like we should be rounded up very nicely. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's our meeting for next week. Um, if you have any uh, I assume most of them are virtual nowadays, but if you have any uh, events that you want to share with anybody, feel free to unmute yourself. You'll just need to say the event, date, time, and then just a little detail. Jess, go right ahead. <laughs> um, so all, there's been a lot of talk about shopping local, and there are um, a lot of shops still opening, or still open, and new shops opening, grand opening for... Roots of Inspiration, they have a lot of different um, small business owners inside their business, similar to um, Scrub Your Butt and Gathered Goods. Um, so their grand opening is Saturday. Look up Roots of Inspiration. They're next to the Yellow Monkey, which is also a great space to buy some locally crafted items. Um, and then Blue Duck, they were going to be doing a brunch and like art and um, local local artist thing and that's coming up I think the end of the month and she's going to be doing it through December so there won't be food but there's still be some um, great local artists that you can buy um, some holiday gifts for so that's what I have. Oh I have one more I have one more quick thing if if you all are on Facebook um, I tr I'm trying to start this uh, hashtag what is it local or what is it Katrina I literally oh <laughs> tagged tag number two local and you tag two people to identify two restaurants that um, you're getting takeout or delivery from this week so if you find my page Brooke Alquist Carlson you can see my version of it and I've tagged Aaron Sexton and and, and Michael Wojcik to do it. And so we wanna keep it going. And then for the holiday season, we're gonna switch it over to um, sh tag to local for um, gifts and make sure that we're highlighting some local stores and then also tagging the um, chambers shop local safely at the same time. So if you could 
do that and try to spin it off and build some momentum to support our restaurants right now and our local businesses in the coming month, including Air Insanity and our gyms that are selling gift cards and memberships online, that would be awesome. And Katrina, go ahead with uh, your event, just because this is recorded in case somebody's watching later. Oh, I don't really have a, an event necessarily, but um, our we always, you know, with Black Friday coming up and Christmas shopping, our, our theme is Give the Gift of Fun, um, and we like to try to, to push that to everybody. Um, you can buy gift cards and jump passes, um, socks and water bottles and beanies and, and just some fun stocking stuffer ideas. Um, we've we're right now redesigning our website to, since we will no longer be open for the next four weeks to really focus on just our online sales and trying to help push um, stocking stuff for ideas and, and gift cards. Um, so all the help there is huge. People will direct people to our website. Um, hopefully after today, I'll have it done. So it'll be ready. Perfect, thank you. Um, is there any other um, events that you want to share with the round table? This one has nothing to do with me, um, except for um, you can win. You could, um, we have an auctioned off birthday party package here, but Power of the Purse is coming up um, in December. So, um, and I know a lot of businesses ha have been trying to support them and, and donate some some fun packages still while they can. So, and do it again. so I think they're all virtual, but. Yeah, it's all virtual. So if you need to, Power of the Purse. By United Way. Okay, sounds good. I think that wraps up our uh, meeting. We'll see you. And, and thank you so much, for uh, Sherry, for putting everything in the chat there. Um, so our next roundtable is on December 18th. Um, and then she also put the Rachaman Food, the restaurant directory as well. So uh, if you need to write them down, feel free. And then... Um, uh, and then we'll see you guys next month and we'll wrap up 2020. <laughs> Hopefully it's better than this. <laughs> done and done. That's great. Thanks everyone for joining All right, today. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.